In an ever-changing and increasingly complex society, the focus on self-indulgence has endangered a healthy concept of family. How do we make commitment to God and family central to our well-being? Paul says a committed relationship must be sought in which husbands, wives, and children love, honor, and respect both God and one another. These verses espouse and present a unifying principle of building strong family ties. These strong family ties are built in order to help families live together in the home as believers serving one another in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ. Family life was originated and ordained by God in the Garden of Eden. He set the first man, Adam, in a family with his prototypical marriage to Eve and bearing of children. God encouraged and tutored his people in both the Old and New Testaments to value strong family networks and live in harmony and peace with all loved ones. However, as believers, this idea of a healthy family life cannot be achieved without submission to one another and reverence to Christ. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. This word for love is frequently used in the New Testament to describe God's love toward humanity. Jesus Christ expressed this kind of love to the church when he vicariously laid down his life so that the church could be born, developed, and expanded. Paul states that Christ restrained himself unselfishly from engaging in a lifestyle that would, not, that would put personal glory above God's purpose. Christ, out of love and devotion, had to make himself of no reputation so that he could fully serve God's purpose for the church. The key motivation for his life was to fulfill God's purpose by serving the ultimate needs of God's people through a shameful death on the cross. In the same way, husbands are admonished to follow the example of Christ to unconditionally and sacrificially serve the holistic, spiritual, physical, psychological, emotional, economic, and material needs of their wives. This analogy or concept of how to, be, how to sacrificially express love for the sake of others should not be misunderstood in the marriage relationship as a requirement for wives to over-depend on their husbands for everything. This is because although Christ loves the church, gave himself for it, and still serves consistently to meet its needs, God has also given the church spiritual and moral responsibilities with agency. The two key words in this verse are nourisheth and cherisheth, or nourish and cherish. <laughs> the word nourish can be defined in a generic sense as providing sustenance and attending carefully to others' necessities of life so that they might mature. It means that the husband has been endowed with the godly responsibility of participating in the personal life of his wife. He is to meet her holistic needs in a manner that progresses the marriage relationship as ordained by God. Indeed, we are called to act in a way to specifically and specially feed and care for our lives. This idea does not mean that the wife is socially, psychologically, or economically inferior to the husband. The author is simply emphasizing the husband's responsibility to play his role as a God-ordained head of the family or household. Second, by using the word cherish, the writer is referring to a husband's promise to his wife to nurture, protect, and shelter her emotionally, physically, psychologically, and spiritually in all situations. So here's our lesson. Marriage should have boundaries, respect, and love that glorifies God. Such expression is even more fulfilling within a marriage within the elements that Paul has just described. The husband loves his wife like Christ loves the church, and the wife trusts or submits to her husband as the church submits to Christ, and both submit to one another and sacrifice for each other as one united body representing the body of Christ in unity and in love. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.